Hi guys, it's Matt from Max on UK here, and in this video we are going to be looking at Cinema 4D's primitive objects. So for those people new to Cinema 4D and those people new to 3D in general, there are things called primitive or parametric objects. Okay, they are the most basic things that you guys can create in 3D. Now Cinema 4D has a vast array of them over here and what we're going to do in this video I'm going to be looking through a majority of them okay to give you an idea of what you can do and how they work. So let's start with the basic one to start with which is a cube. Okay. Now a cube has under its attributes manager over here um, a few tabs. Its first one which you'll find in almost all of them is the basic tab. That allows you to see what its name is whether or not it's visible in the editor, which is this here, visible in the renderer when we render out, its use of color, you can assign a color um, and then you can choose what display, whether it's enabled or not, so whether it's visible or whether or not it's x-ray and you can see through it. Its second tab gives you some coordinates, so this is its size, um, sorry this is its position in the x, y and z axis, so x being red, Y being green, Z being blue, okay, and then you've got its rotation of H, P and B, so heading, pitch and bank. But the one that things that we're going to be focusing on is the attributes for this object. It's called a parametric object because it is created by its parameters. There are a limited number of things that you can do to primitive objects and this is what we're going to be looking at today. So you can change its size here, so you can see that we're working in centimeters, so I can click and scale on that. You can put a number in as well if you wanted, or you can grab its little orange handles to choose where it is, it's, you know, and how big it is if you don't need to be exact. You can increase the number of segments, so if I just do that you'll see that very little changes unless I change my display to ground shading lines. So up here display ground shading lines and there you can see that we have these segments and if I just go back to one one and one you can see that there is only one segment per side and then you can increase that and this is really useful later down the line depending on what it is that you want to be doing with your cube. You've got separate surfaces which will also enable something later on when you make the thing editable and then you've got fillet and fillet allows you to soften these edges so you can choose its fillet radius so whether or not it's really big or really small and the number of subdivisions that do it so if you want a really smooth edge you know you increase the number of divisions of subdivisions and then you can see that you've got a really nice smooth round surface around the side okay I'm not going to worry about Fong in this one that's something for a later date but that is the cube okay I'm just going to delete that and then I'm going to look at the cone so the cones objects you see we've got a few more things here but the one thing I like about the cone is it doesn't just do a cone it'll also allow you to do a truncated one so you can increase the top radius so again with the little orange handles provided that you are on the move and object tool and then you can change its height you can change its bottom radius okay you can increase its height segments or decrease its height segments so if you don't want it to be made out of too many sections and you can increase and decrease its rotation segments so whether or not you want a really smooth cone or whether or not you want something that's a little bit more blocky so like this sort of octagonal hexagonal septagonal you know sort of one okay you can also choose its orientation so at the moment it is plus y so it is facing that direction you could do plus x so it's facing that or you could do you know plus z and it will go that way I'm just going to put it back to um, ooh, plus y then we've got its caps so at the moment the attribute is ticked so you can untick and it will get rid of the top and bottom so there is now no longer a cap on this you can put it back on and again you can increase the number of segments that there are on that cap depending on what you want to do you can put a tick in this box and that allows you to fillet the top and fillet the bottom so you can configure how much you want it to be filleted in those directions so you've got quite nice configuration there so depending on the radius and depending on the height you can choose 
to sort of manipulate those in any particular direction, which is really good. Then we have the slice. So if you put a tick in that box, you can choose a particular slice. So you can increase and decrease that start and finish angle depending on, you know, to suit your needs, depending on what it is that you wish to create. The regular grid allows you to put a tick in that box and it will try its best to give you a regular grid on the inside of that slice. And that was the cone. Okay, just going to delete that. The next one, the cylinder. So going back to the object, we've got a radius that will just work its way all the way across and height, height segments and rotation segments. Very similar to the cone, very little difference there. And very similar to the cone, we have a cap, so you can turn it off and back on and you can see all the way through. And then you have fillet, only this time it will do um, only the radius there and it will do it at both ends, as opposed to allowing you to do it separately like it did on the cone. With the slice, once again, you've got the ability of slicing it and giving yourself a regular grid. That was the cylinder. We then have a disc. The disc is you know, incredibly simple. So you have an inner radius which you can configure or zero out will be a complete disc. Um, when you have an outer radius, you have the number of segments that that disc is made up of. So, you know, two, three, four, and you have rotation segments like everything else. So whether or not you want it to be really smooth or quite, you know, non-tagonal, I suppose, with nine of them. There we go, octagonal with eight. Once again, you've got a slice, so you can slice your way through and it will give you, you know, the ability of configuring how much of that slice of this disc that you want. Okay, that was really quick. That was the disc. Let's look at the plane. The plane is very simple. It's only useful object stuff is here, which allows you to control its width and its height. Okay, even though it's not high, it's it's basically its width and its depth. So again, you can configure it via numbers here. So whether or not you wanted 750 by 200 and you can make a really thin one, and then you can control the number of segments that make up that plane here. You can change its orientation once again. So if you wanted it to be up Y um, plus X plus Y plus Z, so on and so forth. Okay. And that was the plane. Very quick. I am rushing through these, sort of. But to be honest, hopefully it just gives you a brief overview of all of the things that the settings are available to do. Then we have a polygon. And this polygon quite literally is a polygon that is simply made up of one polygon with height and well height and width you can make it a triangle if you wanted so that you can control those sorts of things and that's literally all it does okay again you can control its orientation and delete next we have um, the sphere now the sphere is a little bit more of an interesting one so you can control its radius as you would expect so its radius is the center point to the outer point so you can control that the number of segments it has so you can vastly increase or vastly decrease depending on you know what you want for this sphere now the interesting thing about the sphere is this at the moment it's on standard then we can go to tetrahedron and what that does is it changes the way the polygons are made so at the moment it looks perfectly spherical still but if you decrease the polygon count we start to get to something that's a little bit more interesting. I mean, if you go right down, you just end up with a pyramid. But you can see that it starts to build in more and more of those polygons. Um, so something like that. Tetrahedron. Okay. Tetrahedron can go to a hexahedron. And again, depending on the number of sides, so there's very little between 7 and 8. But the moment you get over a certain point, it's just basically a sphere with an awful lot of polygons on it in a different array. Sometimes it's a little bit useful. Ten can be good, but eight actually, uh, eight or seven, eight, a lot of people use to kind of start doing heads with, which is something else you could bear in mind. You now have an octahedron, and again, at some point, it will just crack its way down. So that one's really good. If it looks like if you want to produce something that the crystal maze would have used, um, 12 sided and nice things like that. Then we have the isosahedron. Again, it's the way it sort of lays out its polygonal count. So if you keep increasing, it will eventually just be a nice soft sphere. And if you decrease enough, you'll end up with very little. 
but there's somewhere a difference between you know sort of 13 and 16 where it will give you you know a different sort of faceted face and then the last one the hemisphere so if you want a standard sphere but only half of it you will get that using the hemisphere and that was the sphere object okay let's have a look at the torus okay so often described as the donut so you have the ring radius which controls the general radius of the entire thing you have ring segments which allows you to control the number of segments that work that way all the way around I'm slowly making the large hadron collider it seems then you have the pipe radius and that is how thick that actually goes anything from what can look like a bracelet to one of Homer Simpson's donuts okay um, and again you've got pipe segments so you can choose how many there are to make it round as well as how many there are to, on its circumference so that you can get some really nice soft ones or you can get some much squarer objects again we've got a slice just as we've had before and regular grid which is the same as all the others okay and deleting the torus then we have our capsule okay so this capsule on our object we have our radius which controls how wide the entire capsule is and then you have the height so that will allow you to get a you know a higher capsule or you can have something that's really thin you've got height segments which controls the number of segments above you've got the cap segments which controls that particular part rotation segments which allows you to sort of again choose how many it makes all the way around orientation which we've gone through and slice with slice and regular grid okay exactly same as the others and delete we also then have the oil tank so this oil tank again has an outer radius and a height height segments which we're used to and then the cap height which allows us to change exactly where that is so from zero which basically gives us a cylinder to you know slowly working our way down so that they meet in the middle which almost gives us a sphere height cap segments will do the same thing slice and regular grid exactly the same as all the others then we have a tube now the tube is very similar to the torus so you have an inner radius but each time you have an outer radius so rather than being a thickness like we had before you have two separate radii that would allow you to configure this rotation segments cap segments okay orientation this time we've got fillet so you can control how much fillet there is so you can increase and decrease there doesn't seem to be an orange handle for that one so you've got to be aware of that so you can choose the number of segments and then you can choose its radius depending on how smooth you want that anything from you know car tire to polo you know all sorts of stuff all back to a donut um, so once again you've got the slice so 0 to 100 regular grid what we're all used to by now and then we have a pyramid okay this pyramid allows you to control the width of the pyramid um, the depth of the pyramid as it were and then the middle one is height so that's pretty much what it does you can increase the number of segments and it will do so in a triangulated fashion you can change its orientation as with all of the others okay no sort of difference there and nothing else we can do with it so that's the pyramid gone okay the platonic is a little bit more interesting um, in some form it's a bit like a cut down sphere so you've got a radius which you can configure and you've got the number of segments which you can increase and decrease and then you have the different types of things that we can create at the moment it's on an icosa or isosa probably isosa uh, if we go to a tetra which largely is a pyramid uh, and we've got a hexa which is a cube okay then you've got an octa so which is a sort of double pyramid a dodeca that one's really interesting because it's a mix of well technically it's all pentagons all the way outside um, but it's being made up of different segments and then we have an isosa which is what we had before which is a sort of uh, pentagon thing on the, around the outside and then we have a bucky I've never come across a shape called a bucky before uh, but it seems to be a mix of hexagons and pentagon, uh, pentagons come on um, that allows you to create 
you know this sort of interesting shape and that's the platonic okay moving on to the figure now the figure here if I just zoom in is kind of useful in that it allows you to judge scale so at the moment this is 180 centimeters tall the sort of average height of a human male so 160 so you can configure that you know depending on what it was that you want to do or you can grab again the orange handle and configure that you can increase and decrease the number of segments so if you want a really smooth figure or if you want a really low poly figure like incredibly low poly um, you know depending on what you need Th that's pretty much all you can do with a basic figure you can make it editable but that's for the realms of other things a little bit later on um, maybe I'll make it editable quickly so just pressing the make editable button will allow you to get to all of the separate segments of your character you know mesh here which you can you know, sort of rotate and move around and things like that so depending on what you want okay there it is really quite fast that was it that's pretty much all you can do with the figure um, and very limited amounts that you can do as a parametric object okay then we come to the landscape and the landscape object is an interesting one it's very useful for you at the moment it doesn't show an awful lot but what you can do with the landscape object here again you've got basic coordinates as we've always got you've got the size which does exactly as you'd expect uh, with those ways uh, the height gives you a little bit more definition which is quite nice this is the important one when it comes to this landscape object if you want it to look good the more polygons you have the smoother it will look I'm going to turn off my grout shading for the moment just so you can see what it looks like so if I lower the polygon count you can see that it starts to get very limited it's the amount of detail that you have on it is quite small but the more you have the better it gets okay but please be aware your machine may start to slow down we then have rough and fine furrows so if I increase the rough you can see that it sort of spreads out or depletes in that sort of fashion or you have fine furrows which will give you more detail now it's when you start playing with the fine and rough furrows you might find that you need to increase your polygon count even further so that you get a nice smoother texture the scale will configure you know how much of that you can see as to whether or not the mountains are very very tiny or whether or not it is a large sort of moonscape as it were to flatten that out you can control the amount that is at sea level so it will flatten down and you can end up with this nice bay going on you know you can end up with little tiny mountains depending on what you're after or you can do what they call a plateau level and that will allow you to build these big mountains uh, these big flat plateaus which I swear I've seen in a film somewhere um, maybe I'll make it out of paper uh, paper mache or mashed potato um, then you've got your orientation again you can choose which way up you want it to face uh, you have multifractal um, the settings sort of like choose how it calculates the fractal that makes this everything I've read seems to say keep multifractal on so I'm just going to lower that back down a little bit so it's not quite so incredible and then you, the seed is its variant so it will rearrange and rejig so if you're not happy with a particular one you know put in any random number and then work around it either side and it will create a almost unique mathematical variant of it borders at sea level you can untick and that stops the borders being at sea level so now it doesn't just flatten out you can control how much height and depth there is in that sort of fashion and you know maybe if I just went for five we can see another seed variant which is quite interesting and again we can get rid of the fine furrows so it's a little bit more rough and we get this weird sort of look and you can increase and decrease the amount of rough furrows there are um, you can whack the scale back up and we can start to see those sorts of things sea level might come into a little bit more play so we've got some interesting what look like sort of plastic mountains and then a really interesting one so I'm just going to whack that back to one I'm going to whack that to zero and zero is spherical 
So you put a dig in the box there, and it's now spherical, and it means that you can create anything from a strange snowflake to what I always think is an odd sort of meteorite, or perhaps meatball. Um, you can control its radius through here, so you can make it really big or really small. Uh, the height is in relevance to the radius, so um, however big that is, it will only ever be slightly smaller or slightly bigger. So you may have to increase and decrease the scale as you play with that as well, depending on what you want to create. Oh, that's quite freaky. I quite like that. And that's the landscape object. Okay, you have a guide, which is a measuring tool. And then you have a null object. No, null objects don't exist as such. You can't see them. They don't exist. They don't render. But what they are useful for doing is grouping. Okay, so if you had a selection of primitives, so say like a cube and ooh, two cubes, fine. Um, you've got two cubes. You can put them both by shift selecting into a null. And then if you move the null around, you can move those about. Okay, that's what null objects do. You can choose how you view a null object, so at the moment it's display as a dot. You can choose all sorts of things, from triangles to a pentagon, uh, to a pyramid. So if I just zoom in a little bit more to that, we should be able to see. And then you can choose you know, how big it is. So if you have something that you want to be able to easily select, you know, a lot of people when using rigging will use null objects as um, controllers because it's something that we can pick up quite easily. But that's a null object. Okay, um, the last one is a relief object um, which needs an image. Okay, um, bear with me a second and I shall find an image. Okay, so if I just go to my textures there and I look on my desktop, I have a very bad black and white version of the Maxon Cinema 4D logo. Okay, and just click yes to that. And what it does is it creates this interesting relief. So where it is black, um, it will indent it. And where it is gray, it will kind of work its way to not. And where it is white, it will flatten. So you can control its height. With that, you control its number of segments. So if you want it to look much you know, slicker than it did, you can control control how much the bottom level um, sort of fades out and you can control how much the top does it. You can even make that spherical as well if you particularly wanted, although I'm not quite sure how that's going to work with that sort of image. So that is what the relief object does. Okay, It allows you to build a relief of that image that you happen to have found. Okay, so that is all of the primitive objects in Cinema 4D. I hope that was useful for you. It's a very sort of whirlwind tool, but I hope it gives you an idea of just what the basic things are and how quickly you can work your way around them. And I shall catch you in the next video.